Welcome to Dateline, everyone. I'm Lester Holt. It's a case some called the perfect crime. The setting sure was perfect, an island in the Caribbean, a getaway vacation for a stressed out couple from New England. But only one of them came back alive. Prosecutors would claim it was cold-blooded murder. But see what you think happened in those warm tropical waters, because even after two juries had spoken, this case had a whole new ending. Here's Dennis Murphy. Summer and water just seem to go together in the lazy, hazy days. For most of us, a dunk in a backyard pool will suffice. But for the more adventurous, only total immersion in the open ocean will do. A ticket to paradise. It's a majestic world. It's just awe-inspiring. It's incredibly peaceful. You're down there with the fish. You look around you and there's this amazing wonder. And the closer you look, the more beautiful it gets. All of your senses are getting overloaded. Your visual colors are just phenomenal. David Swain and his wife, Shelley Tyre, shared that passion for scuba diving. Give me the water and that's where I belong. So to escape a dreary Rhode Island winter in March of 99, they chartered a 45-foot sailboat with another couple and their child. If a carefree scuba vacation is what you want, it doesn't get much better than the Caribbean's British virgins. Was Shelley looking forward to it? Oh yeah, it was definitely a, a different experience for her. She was a big fish person. Yeah, anything to do with animals and critters and whatnot, that's what she was about. She liked to count fish underwater. He liked to photograph them. So what could go wrong? As it turned out, quite a lot. They were wreck diving south of the island of Tortola when it happened. He immediately noticed that her breathing uh, apparatus was out of her mouth. I heard an emergency call that there was a diving accident uh, and uh, they needed assistance. The body appeared to be lifeless. What happened in 30 minutes time, 80 feet beneath the surface, would be examined and replayed in people's minds for the next decade. How was it that an experienced diver like Shelley Tyre could be lost just like that? And when it happened, where exactly was her husband, a master dive instructor, who was her safety buddy on that dive? David Swain's explanation would eventually land him in the center of a far-reaching investigation. And tonight, for the first time, he tells Dateline the latest chapter. My mouth drops open and I'm in shock again. And answers the tough questions. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Give him a theory. I don't have a theory. It's a decade-long story that began here in coastal Rhode Island, far from those beautiful waters of the Caribbean. It was the early 90s when David and Shelley met. He was the dive instructor, and she was the customer on a boat out in Narragansett Bay. It was a rocky day, you know, a little bumpy. A couple of the big tough guys got seasick. So I, I paired up with her and went back in. So she had some spunk, huh? Oh, she had a lot of spunk. And I was showing her fish in a way that she had never seen them before. So that's what got things started. Shelly Tyre was a bundle of energy, a five foot nothing tall teacher and school administrator. She was as vivacious as he was quiet. And when they started dating, David was only too happy to show Shelley the waters where he pursued his life's passion. Teaching scuba and kayaking through his dive shop in Jamestown, Rhode Island. Here he is in 1997 giving a kayak lesson. It's just a very easy figure eight stroke. Swain was known to his friends and customers as an honest businessman and an active member of the community. And likewise, the people in Shelley's circle raved about her. School parents like Colleen Tondor. She was effervescent. She was always on the move, always on the go. Shelley, who memorably wore a bumblebee costume to a school event once, was seen as nothing less than a gift by the faculty and parents at Thayer Academy in suburban Boston, where she was headmaster of the middle school. She had an ear for, for every child. And, and when she spoke to you, she looked you in the eye and she didn't care. The world fell away. She was there focused on you and listening to what you had to say. It was great. And always by Shelley's side, her constant companion, Tori, the Bernese Mountain Dog. Her furry comfort was always available to a pupil having a bad day. Shelley and David married in 1993. They didn't have children together, but she quickly endeared herself to his two, a son and a daughter from a previous marriage. Did she fit in with them okay? Oh, the kids loved her. What do you think that thing was between you? 
a love of adventure, a love of nature. You couldn't find somebody that had more liveliness and gumption and determination. If there was a marital speed bump, it was Shelley's weekday commute. The private school where she worked was a long slog from coastal Rhode Island. She was probably seeing more of Tori the dog than David, her husband. I, I think it was some god-awful amount. At least four hours behind the wheel, back and forth, huh? Yes. Did that start to get to her? There were times it would get to her. You know, she'd be up at the crack of dawn or before and not get home until late at night. Without question, we were struggling about the time apart. Spring break of 1999 would be Shelley and David's time to escape the grind and enjoy together what they love best, the water. So come spring break that year, she and her husband David are going to go to the British Virgin Islands and dive. Yes. In one of the most beautiful oceans of the world. Exactly. But of course, that trip, that last dive, would go so horribly wrong. How could anyone make sense of the deeply sad and mysterious death of Shelley Tyre? When we come back, disaster underwater. He surfaces, screaming. What had happened beneath the surface? He's got another diver with him, or I realize it's Shelly. When the last dive continues. <laughs> 